Black Myth Wukong has exposed the biggest scam in the video gaming industry when it comes to journalists and consultancy firms working together to shape and change and extort the industry and i think this is what we're getting from the information that we're hearing about what happened with game science the chinese developer of black myth wukong where we heard about sweet baby inc a consultancy firm from the west extorting them for millions of dollars and threatening them with a barrage of articles hating their game from journalists associated with Sweet Baby Inc. And this is a big controversy that has developed over time with a suggestion and rumors online in Chinese Weibo, a social media website that came up with rumors that Black Myth Wukong Game Science the developers rejected a $7 million extortion campaign from DEI consultants that waived negative press from IGN and Kotaku as proof of their game's lack of quality. And I think this is the thing people understood that may have been happening with journalists working in tandem with consultancy firms to influence the video gaming industry. But now we know there's a price tag attached to the changes that we're seeing in the video gaming industry. And this is the thing that people dreaded it was happening but always knew was happening underneath everything we've been seeing in the gaming industry if you don't know what's been happening in the gaming industry it's been turned into something that is representative of progressive social politics values and morals rather than a fun entertaining space for people to get away from and i think that's the thing that we're seeing with these consultancy firms attacking black myth wukong it's not within the video gaming industry structure it's out in a different country that doesn't follow their rules so they try to reach out to it in the ways they always reach out to all these other companies they try to do it through bullying and extortion. And if you know anything about Kim Belair of Sweet Baby Inc., that's her modus operandi. Terrify the people into doing what you want them to do. And she gave a speech about that. Put this stuff up to your higher ups and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. And I think this is what we're seeing with the Black Myth Wukong devs where they are being pushed into a corner where they have to follow the standards set by these consultancy firms or they will get negative press. If you don't believe me, you can just go to any IGN article about this game and it's always negative, it's always a hit piece and you can see them doing this month after month, every month, another hit piece on Black Myth Wukong until they pay the price of $7 million to the consultancy firms to get positive press and I think this is now the crux of the situation where we see these companies always investing in Sweet Baby Inc and all these other companies because they're trying to get the positive press that comes with the investment and I think this is the thing that we're seeing now it's an industrial complex now the DEI industrial complex well coin that term if you hear it anywhere else it came from me this is the DEI industrial complex that is serving itself and its own political ideals where they have hit pieces that have journalists working in tandem to destroy your game and knock it down from the high horse that may be on to dissuade gamers from purchasing your game and to hopefully bankrupt your company for not following their standards of what should be set in your game and of course even if you do follow their standards it's not what the gamers want so you go bankrupt anyway so it's a lose-lose situation for the developers and of course Black Myth Wukong the developer game science gave a big F you to Sweet Baby Inc and that's why now we're seeing hit piece after hit piece of this game everywhere all over the gaming industry and I think this goes down to the overall scam and extortion tactics that we've been seeing with DEI programs within the United States for the past few years we have a detailed image of how the scam works number one fake journalists and their canceling army accomplices complain about the lack of representations number two video game studios cower in fear because they may lose ESG investment Number three, Sweet Baby Inc. says pay us to make these problems go away. Number four, video game studio hires Sweet Baby Inc. Number five, SBI injects video game with their ideology. Number six, fake video game journalists praise the studio's DEI efforts. Number seven, players get the horrible unplayable game that they won't play. And number eight, the game flops, studio closes, and layoff happens. And of course, fake journalists continue on with their bigotry, blaming the game players for the failure of the game rather than the tasteless content that was produced by their own companions in the consultancy firms. And of course, finally, you rinse and repeat and do that all over again. And this is how the DEI scam is building out within the video game industry all across the world. And you can see this influence expanding and being brought out and doing things that are changing the video game industry in wholly negative ways. And I I think when we see some negative press about Black Myth Wukong, 
we realize it's coming from people that have skin in the game. And I think that's the journalists and consultancy firms. And now we understand that with them attacking after this news has come out about their efforts to extort game science for $7 million. We have all the usual suspects coming out with negative reviews, trashing the game, attacking the game, trying to make sure the video game players do not like this game because they haven't succumbed to their overall extortion efforts. And I think that's the thing people are seeing with the video game industry nowadays, that it is a, an industrial complex now for DEI consultants that are trying to force their image, their form of representation into the video game industry. And now they're even claiming victim as the release of this information is being exposed you can see this with Rebecca Valentine, one of the journalists that kind of started the hit piece campaign and they came out with their own false version of the events where they are the victim, where they never address any of the information when it concerns the extortion efforts of Sweet Baby Inc. They, they have their own demands from the developer game science where they should have defend their wrongness of their perception of what's going on with game science and their studio. And it is something that we've seen happening consistently within the industry where they, these studios are being attacked for things that no one even understands what's happening and she goes on in her complaint making demands of the company to include femme Cody characters in their game I'm like what are you talking about you're a journalist why are you trying to guide and direct the video game right now and I think this is the that hubris that comes with them influencing many games before Black Myth Wukong this is a time where they feel like they have the power of the journalists to manipulate and change your game into something that they feel represents them when this game itself is about the monkey king it's about chinese mythology it's not supposed to represent western standards and moral ideologues and what they see the world should be for today it's about chinese mythology and it has nothing to do with western standards so for sweet baby ink to barge in and try to impose their perspective on society onto a game is out of this world stupid and i think this is what we're seeing with black myth wukong i think this is why gamers are celebrating this backlash and it's funny to see them come out and demand game science the developer to defend them and their lives when they're the ones assisting in the extortion of the video game industry based on their own personal progressive ideology rather than actually making games and the journalists have grown too big for their britches right now they feel like they're the developer right now much like uh, the localization teams for translations where they feel like they can change the story of animes and and popular dramas because they feel like they have the power and they can shape everything and i think the journalists are trying to put themselves in that position with black myth wukong and a whole assortment of other games they feel like they can change the game industry to, sh to represent their image and their likeness and what they want to see in the future of games and i'm like no the gamers don't want what you want when it comes out it fails miserably and i think a lot of developers are realizing that's the case and of course Ch this chinese developer game science really does even care about what they think they're really passionate about the game they're making and i don't even think they care about what we think the people that are against sweet baby they're just trying to make their game and i love that they're making their game they're giving the fu to these consultancy firms and we should support it and it seems like the gamers are supporting them because they're number one on steam now this is the most pre-ordered game in the planet right now gamers are attracted to someone that is not bending the knee to these social progressive activists and i love to see where this game is going in the future i love to see what the, the chinese video game developers are doing in the future they're making cool games korea is doing the same thing japan used to be doing that is being influenced by sweet baby and all these other game designers but they still have their mavericks out there that are doing their own thing in japan so all these asian countries are coming out together making things that gamers actually want to play even saudi arabia has snk fatal fury now we know these developers are going to be making hard-hitting games and we still have small independent developers in America that are producing great games as well. So we have a good, bright future as gamers and just seeing Black Myth Wukong fight back against these journalists and their overall machinations in this DEI industrial complex. I love to see it. Hopefully it continues on and hopefully we support the games that do fight back. And I think Game Science Black Myth Wukong is one of those games that are doing that. But you tell me what you think about the situation. Do you think this is a positive step for the gaming industry where we're hearing Black Myth Wukong reject these extortion efforts? Do you think these extortion efforts are true? I think the response from the author of all these hit pieces 
is a validation of statement in and of itself where she's trying to defend her place within the industry and it's making me think yeah she's part of this extortion campaign and this dei industrial complex but maybe i'm crazy you leave your comments tell me what you think like share and subscribe this is wagner those why catch next time